Hi there, my name is Frank Tate and I'm the president of Gulf Breeze Software Partners. I'm here today to give you a little information about Azure integration with IBM Cloud Orchestrator version 2.5. This integration was just introduced in this latest version of ICO and is quite different from the Amazon AWS and IBM software integrations. The screen that I have displayed right now is the ICO resources page which shows the current Azure cloud services that I have configured. At the end of this video, one more will be listed here. So to get started, um, we need to create a deployment, an Azure deployment. And the way that's done is with Microsoft Visual Studio, which I have shown here. I have a Visual Studio uh, 2013 community installed. This is a, a freely downloadable product from Microsoft, which makes it pretty nice. There is a 2015 version, which you may want to go with if you're installing from scratch, but you are going to need this tool to create the uh, cloud service files that you're going to need to actually create this deployment. Um, the ICO documentation mentions some Windows tool that could be used for doing this. I don't know what that tool is other than Visual Studio. So that's what I've got here. Um, in the solution I'll show you today, I don't have really any functionality whatsoever. So my web application doesn't do anything other than allow me to access it over the internet. But that's really enough to show that the ICO portion of this process works like a champ. So we're going to uh, create a deployment uh, and then uh, just so you can see how to do that the ICO documentation actually steps you through once you have those files it steps you through uh, in a very straightforward manner exactly how you need to configure ICO um, to allow this deployment to happen so I'm not going to cover that here but we will go through and actually deploy this deployment and look at the Azure dashboard to see uh, to see once it does actually get created. So um, to create a usable deployment you need to open Visual Studio which may take a little time but once you're in there um, you just need to uh, create a project the type that I've had lots of success with is uh, under um, templates, Visual Basic Cloud, and it's the Azure Cloud Service. Now the way I got this Azure Cloud Service option is installing the Azure plugin for uh, Visual Studio, which is also available on Microsoft's site for free. So I'm going to select Azure Cloud Service, uh, just taking the defaults, then I'm going to select uh, that I want an ASP.NET web role. Uh, it's this role, this web role, that is going to be what I actually access via a browser to validate that my solution has been deployed. So I'm creating this web role and I'm just going to specify that this is a single page application uh, because once again it's not going to do much other than exist in the cloud and allow me to access it remotely. So it takes a little while. You can see in the bottom left hand corner all of the uh, actions that are being performed for this new project. Uh, in, in your environment if you're dealing with Microsoft Azure that normally is going to mean that you have Microsoft developers who are very familiar with this. So this whole process is just to give people an idea or, or a, a good view of what goes into actually deploying one of these and what it looks like from an ICO perspective. But uh, now we have our, our project created and the way you create the two files that are necessary, the CSCFG and CSPKG files, is you need to right click on your project, not on the solution or the role, but on right click on the project and select package. 
uh, leave the default uh, for the cloud service configuration and the release build configuration, then don't select either of these two options. Especially, do not select the enable remote desktop for all roles. Uh, that actually requires a certificate and ICO doesn't currently support certificates for uh, Azure deployments. I have a blog post on blog.golfsoft.com about how you can get around that basically by creating a service and attaching a certificate to that service and then uh, uh, de creating a deployment that, that runs underneath that service but we aren't going to cover that today. Just for basic purposes, do not select enable remote desktop. It, it just causes things not to work. And then you can click package and it will uh, create the package that you need, uh, specifically those two files that are going to be needed. Um, and it has, uh, you can see in the bottom right, it's still going and then in the bottom left it says publish publish successful and it actually automatically brings up this uh, file explorer uh, with the folder containing the two files that I need to upload to my uh, storage on Azure. Now I've already done that I just wanted to show you from Visual Studio just how easy it is to create these files and that's all you need to do now, uh, I'm going to go into um, ICO and Azure to show you some additional things. So, first of all, uh, I'm going to go into Azure. I'm in my Azure dashboard and uh, just going to clean some of that up. And uh, I see all of the elements that I have or items that I have. Uh, one of the things that I have is storage defined and so I'm going to click on storage over on the left even though it was in the center portion there I just want to show you exactly what's in my storage um, I have two uh, storage uh, locations defined or storage components defined uh, the one that I'm using for this is this FTGBSP and in here, I can go into containers because it's uh, you need to put your your two files, your CSCFG and CSPKG files, into a container. And I can see the URL here. Uh, it's this URL that actually needs to be specified when you create your Azure region from ICO. Uh, you, so you can just copy it from here. Uh, and I can actually go look inside this container and I'll see the files that I've already uploaded. Uh, um, you can upload some new ones by clicking on new down here for example, but the files that I uploaded are shown, shown here and I, when I created my template, I specified these file names, the template in ICO. Uh, to create the deployment package template. Um, I specified these file names. Uh, so these are the ones that, uh, they aren't the ones I just created, but it's, it's a service that's essentially identical except for the name. Um, I then, I can also see the cloud services that I currently have defined. So I have a couple of these defined. Uh, what we'll see once our new deployment goes out there is a new cloud service is going to be created and there will be a deployment underneath it. So um, that is uh, my Azure dashboard. Uh, I can go under my ICO dashboard and again I see my current cloud services that are defined. I don't have any deployments on either one of these. Uh, so if I click on it, all I see is information about that service and no actual deployments underneath it. But I will have some deployments. Uh, I'll have a new service and a deployment underneath it once I get 
through this video. So I'm going to go into the self-service catalog under, I can either go under deploy cloud services or use the neat search function that searches as you type and just start typing Azure and it shows me the deploy cloud service into Azure region. I can click on that guy uh, and here I get to specify if I want to use an existing service or create a new one. I'm going to create a new one so I'm just going to click next and then um, I get to specify the availability zone where I'm going to pick South Central US and click next and now I get to specify my cloud service name I'm going to name it FT video service and the deployment name same thing followed by uh, the characters DEPL for deployment your Windows people uh, probably already have naming conventions that you can use here the deployment slot is uh, production means that it's going to be available publicly staging means that it's only available within the Azure cloud itself I'm going to specify production so that we can actually get to this deployment uh, and I only have one deployment package defined within ICO so I'm going to select it and click next and I have all of my options here and then I'm going to click OK to start the deployment and then I'm going to click on this request link to check on the status of that deployment uh, I can see that things are happening it's successfully going through now what I'm going to do is check on my Azure uh, dashboard and I can see that it's already created this new FT video service uh, cloud service and I can see that it's deploying into the production environment and I also see the uh, URL so I'm going to click on open a new tab uh, and I can see that it's trying to connect but it won't be successful until that deployment actually goes through so uh, it may even fail before the deployment completes because it does take a few minutes but I can see that Azure has already given it a uh, URL a public URL and it's still deploying I can get more information if I go into this guy and click on dashboard we'll see there we go it shows me not all role instances are ready it says one instance one creating uh, and that's in the production environment and I do see that it has come back with the connection is timed out and that's simply because my service isn't yet ready uh, I will go back to see what it's doing it actually says running at this point but it's got a question mark next to it so we'll see what it says here when we get into it has okay so it's starting is the actual status and it's going to take a, a little while to get get up and running uh, clicking on monitor shows nothing because it's it's not actually running uh, configure we don't need to configure anything I'm going to go back to monitor see if anything's there not yet and go back to the dashboard just we'll see it's still in the starting uh, status and we'll come back to ICO to see what it has to say about it uh, so from ICO's perspective the process is complete and we can actually check on this guy again um, just seeing if we can get it to update we can't but it has uh, from ICO's perspective it's uh, completed it's handed it off and we can check under Azure cloud services under resources and we can see that this FT video service has been created click inside it and we can actually see the deployment URL so you don't have to go to the Azure dashboard to see that deployment URL you can see it directly here uh, back in Azure there we go uh, the dashboard was saying 
Uh, it just changed. It said one waiting for the status. All right, so we'll come back to the URL and try to hit it to see if it's going, if it's ready yet. Because again, Azure just takes a little while, and behind the scenes, uh, each one of these roles is implemented as a virtual machine. So it has to spin up a virtual machine and get the software running on it before it can actually uh, field our requests. So I'm just going to click around here on the Azure dashboard because it just takes just takes it a little bit to get going. Um, there we go. So it's got one instance running, one busy. So that should mean that it's running. So I should be able to refresh this guy and we can see it's waiting for ftvideoservice.cloudapp.net. So maybe it's going to work. It was saying connecting before. But this guy, there we go. And we have our web application. We've deployed uh, an application on Azure through ICO, and we're successfully able to hit that application. And that, that was the whole goal of this video. So we have uh, gone through, we created a deployment package on, under Visual Studio. Then we went and uh, deployed that package through ICO. I didn't cover the, the details of uh, registering that and so forth. I'll do that in another video possibly, but it is in documentation. And we can see that uh, it does get deployed successfully and we're able to access that deployment, that service. So other videos that I'll come out with will have more information about ICO. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, we do specialize in Tivoli Consulting, so please check out our website at http www.gulfsoft.com and call us up. We'll come in and help you get your IT running right. Thank you very much.